हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग की आलचाल आई होप गाइस न्यू वर्ड इन दिस वीडियो वी गोइंग टू प्रॉब्लम गेट इक्वल सबस्ट्रिंग विद बजट वी विल सी पोर अप्रोचेस नॉर्मल स्टैंडर्ड वन इट्स इफ यू हैव जस्ट वाच्ड वन वीडियो वन काइंड ऑफ अ स्मॉल क्रैश कोर्स देन इट वुड बी वेरी इजी फॉर यू टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम अगेन फॉर स्पॉइलर अलर्ट्स दैट विल बी दिस वीडियो इफ यू हैड जस्ट वाच्ड दिस वन वीडियो इट विल बी वेरी इजी नाउ कमिंग ऑन बैक द प्रॉब्लम सिंपली सेज दैट यू आर गिवन टू स्ट्रिंग्स एस एंड टी of the same length and an integer array called as sorry and an integer max cost now we want to change s to t which means they, we have a string s of some n characters we have a string t of n characters we have to transform the complete n to t okay changing the ith character of s to the ith character of t it gives us or it incurs a cost of this cost s i Minus T I and that's an absolute value taken, absolute value taken, which is absolute of T I minus S I, right? Again, they have just explained what's the absolute value. We have to return the maximum length, maximum length of substrings of S that can be changed to be the same as the corresponding substring of T, which means again, like he's saying, you cannot transform this entire ad, like entire string of S to entire string of T. So do one thing, you. Should give me what's the maximum length substring which I can transform and can make it exactly equal to t, which means I will I can transform the s to t and then can make it exactly equal. What is that maximum length of substring of s? And again, uh, with the cost and again the cost which I can incur at max should be less than or equal to maximum cost which they have given in the question. And if there is no substring from s that can be Changed to its corresponding substring of t. Answer is zero. Minimum length again. I have to get the maximum length. So in general, for me, I can initialize my answer to a zero. Now, very brute force way which comes to our mind is that okay, Aryan, they are asking for substrings. They are asking for substring, and they are asking to find the length, or basically to the cost of each substring. I know how to find the cost. I can simply subtract. I can do a b minus a get the cost. T minus B get the cost. D minus C get the cost. F minus T gets get the cost. Do a absolute for sure. When I can take I and J to get the substring for a I and J, I can easily get the cost of that specific sub array. Then I can just have a quick check if that cost is less than or equal to my maximum cost given. If yes, then this is a good sub array. And I can take the sub array length to maximize my answer and say answer is equals to maximum of. Answer comma j minus i plus one, right? Now what's the complexity for this? For sure, i and j all these sub arrays or substrings I have to make that will be a o of n square time, and for each substring I have to iterate on the entire that substring and will have to find the cost summation for it. It will take again a o of n time, so this entirely will take a o of n cube time. Now in this kind of substring problems we have already seen. That what happens? We can optimize this brute force approach itself. How we say that if we have this substring, I am going on to i, and then I am going on to j for loop again. It's a for loop of i and a for loop of j, and then I have another for loop where k is from i to k is less than or equal to j, and then k plus plus, which actually finds the cost, current cost, current cost of that substring or sub array. I to J. Now, because of this, I am getting a O of n cube. I can entirely remove this, and I can say that okay, bro. While I was okay, I know it is I to J. And then next time I to J will be this. Next time I to J will be this. Next time it will be this. So I can easily see my J is only moving. So I can easily say okay, for when I to J was here, my cost was let's say zero. Then J came here, the cost can increase to nums of J. When J came here, the cost will increase to Again, nums of j. So it will just keep on increasing on adding nums of j. So you don't have to specifically compute the sub array or substring cost. So with that, I can optimize. I can optimize my brute force by only taking i and j, which means the substring or sub array. And then while building the sub array, I will also be parallelly computing the cost. And that's how I can simply have to optimize it to O of n square. Now, right, right. Now still, O of n square will not work uh, because it's high. So what to do? For sure, uh, we will try to think. Think of what we have to find the maximum length of a substring, which obviously mean that okay, what what are what are the lengths possible? Okay, the length possible is zero, length possible is one, 
length possible is 2 again up to length possible is n your main task is to try for the maximum length so you will see rn i will try to take okay is n length possible if not i will try for n minus 1 length if not i will try for n minus 2 length if not then i will try for n minus 3 length so 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 and go on and go forth and then at a point length 2 is possible okay let's say this is the highest length again i went on for every length from the very beginning and then at this point i can easily say okay length 2 is the first length which is kind of possible for me what is the very basic case which you can see if length 2 is possible length 2 substring is possible to be having a good like cost of less than equal to your maximum cost then for sure small length will also be possible which obviously mean that here in this case maximum cost if you remember it is the same example maximum cost is 3 maximum cost is 3 i can easily see that a substring of length 3 is possible if i take a shorter substring of length 2 it is also possible of length 1 it is also possible so obviously that length here in this case let's say length 3 so length 3 was possible so all the smaller length will also be will also be possible so it is my responsibility to go on from the end and and try for okay maximum length if not okay next maximum okay next next and so on and so forth so i am trying for n lengths in worst case for every length which i will try again here in this case i will say okay I, i'll simply ask again uh i'll simply ask myself is the length three substring good substring or not which means earlier i was trying for all the specific lengths but no worries in this case i will try only for length three only for length three only for length three you see what's happening it's a block which is sliding so you can easily say okay i can simply apply a sliding window approach for the specific length and then i can get the answer right but still you have n possible lengths for every length you are applying a sliding window approach to get the cost or get the score of that specific length sub array it will again for sliding window approach it will take o of n time so i am saying for every length i am taking o of n time i have n lengths it will again be o of n square that did not help out much from my optimized brute force right yeah but do you see a very big great pattern here that lengths whatsoever length we have they follow a pattern of right 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 and then wrong wrong which is a standard pattern of binary search if you don't know this also just write binary search template by rn Mittal. you will get the video on youtube that's one video which will explain you the template also and also the binary search now so we easily see that okay we don't need to have a n we don't need to go to all the n lengths we can just go to log n lengths and thus for every length i will again have to apply a sliding window approach a sliding window approach to get the cost to get the cost how are you sliding window okay for the first window i know the window length should be three for sure because i am applying for a specific window size window length is three i will say okay if the window length is three what's the cost current cost is current let's say cc current cost is three then i know i have to try for the next window in the next window what will happen if I had my i and a j here in the next window, my for sure j will increase. Okay, j sorry, j comes here and then i should come here. Technically, one is going away and two is coming in. So, in the existing cost, I should go away or basically I should leave away one and add the two. So, this will be my new window cost by just incorporating two pointers. Thus, I will go on to all these cells just once. That's how sliding, again, if you don't even know what this is, simply go and watch this one video. One videos are always the, you know, prashad for you. Now, coming on back, uh, we realize that, okay, we can solve this by using binary search and sliding window in O of n log n time. And this will work. Okay. But the interviewer is still wants to ask you can you still optimize it then you will say okay optimizing from n log n which means he wants to optimize to o of n and we saw that okay we want to find the maximum length and okay and i was trying for a sliding window approach earlier um let's maybe remove that log n factor and let's try to see what happens so okay in a standard sliding window what you do or if you remember this one video in which you just use okay again to implement your sliding window you use two pointers only so both of them are interchangeable now uh you have this one window initially you will just try to extend it okay i'll extend it 
extend it again it is possible to extend it extend it if it is possible extend it how to know it's possible or not when the again i will keep on maintaining okay as you can see i will maintain the current cost which is cc it is two which is still less than my maximum cost which means i have a capability to extend it so simply extend it extend it then at this point again the cost is three still it is possible to extend it okay extend it but now the current cost became five which is more than the maximum cost now if things go out of your hand start shrinking okay so i'll start shrinking if i start shrinking whoa okay four went away it's a like now now the current cost is four again it is more than again shrink it so this is a new cost which is three now okay uh, again it is valid start expanding oh expanding okay array is ended so i admit what's the answer bro at every point keep on finding the answer what you will do that okay in the very beginning your current cost your current cost was one in you, your answer maximum answer maximum length is also one you have the capability to extend it extend it again if you don't if you are worried about the temp uh, the actual code the, de the template of your sliding window binary search sorry sliding window and uh, your two pointers just one video again right coming on back uh, my answer again increase to two cost increase to two if he can expand expand it again he can he again the cost will be increased to three it is again less than your maximum sorry less than equal to your maximum cost so again increase your answer okay again try now the cost has become to five it is not less than your less than equal to your maximum cost start shrinking start shrinking this is your new window four oh, sorry one has gone away current cost is four again it is less sorry, again it is more still shrink okay again it is now the current cost is three. Oh, it is good now update your or maximize your answer three and two maximum is still a three so it will still remain as it is now again try to extend it oh array has ended good luck bro you are done and that is how by simply using your two point of side window you can simply get the answer same way in this case your maximum cost was three anything you take anything you take beyond one length array it will exceed so answer is one in this case also maximum is zero so in the very beginning you have a window of length one answer is one but as soon as you expand something your cost will start becoming a two so that you cannot do answer is still a one so now we ultimately saw that by using a simple side event, we can simply get the answer for more folks the problem actually was that find the maximum sub array length with the cost less than equal to maximum cost so i can just take any sub array and again i i will always maintain the length by simply i and j i and j the length for this i and j window is j minus i plus one so i am always maintaining the length also now when this is the case i know i will always ex expand okay i will expand this and then if the cost becomes more than my maximum cost then i should start shrinking it start shrinking it and that's this is how i will do a two pointer or a sliding window again if you're confused dry run and stuff if you want for sliding window please bro that's a simple template which we have always been using so we know that we use always a i and a j and a simple template where j is less than n we actually perform the operation on j here if the things violate we operate on a while loop considering they can also be a if loop that also is a possibility but yeah mostly it's a while loop and then we update our answer we increase our j and then the loop ends that was a template which we have discussed now it's the answer again uh templates are built for fast programming it is not for you to like do a rectification of it right that make sure that part now uh, so we realize that at this point i will firstly incorporate that jth index so i will say current cost will increase because i will incorporate the current cost as in the jth indexed cost which is tj minus sj absolute value okay if the current cost is more than your maximum cost start shrinking which means re start reducing your current cost with the i cost cost of i and then when i say start shrinking okay reduce the cost increase the i and keep on doing this while your while your current cost is more than your max cost again this is just a safety check you can also put i is less than j that also will work now um answer you will simply maximize your answer because now you know after this while loop your current cost will for sure be less than or equal to your max cost so i can use my j and i 
to get the window length and that I can maximize my answer. And I know that at every point I should keep on increasing my J. So I will just keep on increasing my J and that is how I can get my answer. Again, for this the time complexity will be O of N space is nothing but O of 1 because no extra space used. And that's how in the most optimal space and time we can solve it. The only reason I went it very fast because again all these things doesn't even matter in an interview. Interviewer, this is a medium problem. Interviewer cannot waste more than 20 minutes on this. To implement this, you will take around 3 minutes. To explain this approach, optimal approach, you will take around more than, again, uh, like 5-10 minutes, uh, I'll say. This approach will take again 5 minutes. So, it's the reason. Always skim through the, like, very brute force approach is very fast. And then, for the optimal approach, maybe take 5 minutes. For the most optimal, maybe take 10 minutes to explain with a dry run to him. Because, you know, after you write the code, he will he can also ask you to dry run an example, which will again take 5 minutes or can take 2-3 minutes. So, in medium problems, try to finish it in 20 minutes in an interview. Cool, bye-bye, take care.